Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Taste, Taste Buddies. Buddies. As you can see, right, we're not in our usual environment. We are taking you guys on an adventure, a makan trip. So we're at Yoke. While we think of it as everyday food, but actually its history is embedded in British culture, British cuisine. I thought this would be a good place to start off the day, have yeah. breakfast, and have something that, like I said, we think is common, but actually has huge influences from a Western culture from a long time ago. Let's bring on the food. Ta-da! So your typical roti bakar, the kaya, and you have your half boiled egg, beef stew, this one. Beef stew, mm. yeah. And this is something that's quite special, quite unique to this place, roti babi. Roti babi. Over there, yeah. Chicken chop. Chicken 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 chop. chop. Malaysian Chinese food is fusion food, right? Because it came about through a mixture of the local culture, the local ingredients mixed with some um, Western elements. The Hainan people were the last people to immigrate to Malaysia. So when they come here, all the uh, main jobs are taken by other dialects really. So a lot of them become like chef and cooks and maids in uh, households like uh, British households. Uh? Yeah, British households. That's where they learn to yeah. brew coffee, uh, do toast, and then you know like because we don't have steaks here, or whatever they do chicken chop, right? So it's like basically steak. Worcestershire sauce, right? So how do you pronounce this? I say Worcestershire. I say Worcestershire. I say Worcester. What happened to the shirt? You don't say the shirt. Worcestershire. Let's dive into the roti babi. Yes, a typical uh, Chinese. If you combine Malay word with a uh, word babi in it, I get very intrigued. Yeah, it sounds right? good though. It sounds really good, right? <laughs> it's got an egg, egg, egg batter stuffed with uh, pork, minced pork. Uh, roti babi is definitely one of those uh, food getting harder and harder to find it. In, in fact, I don't think that many people know it exists. Well, I'm tasting a lot of onions. A lot of onions means pork. Yeah. There's even like sausage in there. Yeah, it's almost like a French toasty bread, but it has a bit of like a deep fried crust on the outside. All this food, right, is a time capsule. It's a snapshot into like the beginnings of uh, maybe f and in Malaysia. This is tied to history. It's not just a meal, but it's a heritage. The pressure before was to survive. The pressure nowadays is to, best, to be special. Yeah. To be unique in a way to attract attention. The yeah, creation yeah. process is a bit different yeah. nowadays, yeah. I think we should get Mervin in and ask, yeah. how come he didn't update the menu? How come there's no pressure to change? Hey, you still got two, three more meals, ah? Bang Jing did. Alright, here we have Mervin. Second generation, third generation? Third generation. Third generation. I've been helming this for more than about 20 years right now. 20 oh, years wow. for yourself. Yeah, man. I'm old, ah. Anyway, my, my philosophy is simple. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Do it better, but don't have to change it. Why I do this is that most of my customers, they transcend multiple generations. So it's been a ritual that the family comes together for that familiarity. So that onus is on us to maintain that familiarity. Yaki has always been comfort food. You're not out to wow anybody. It's just that I'm happy that somebody comes back for his staple chicken chop, pork chop, noodle, and it's a no-brainer. On behalf of the FMB scene, right, we owe you and your family some level of thanks for continuing yeah. the tradition. Because someone thank you, thank right, you. has uh, to make that welcome. sacrifice, that decision to say, yes. hey, look, because of tradition, we want to continue. If you ask me, the public has definitely spoken, right? They actually think this is something they want to experience. There's always this a queue. This is a freaking Thursday yeah. morning at 10.30 a.m. Yeah. Uh, I was days. here at 7.30, right? There was a queue. Yeah. It is very humbling. We keep them going, they keep us going. And so many places you can have your breakfast, or most people can have their breakfast, and they still choose every year. Mm. There is a sense of fulfillment that comes from it as well. And all the hipsters out there, please come and learn your history. <laughs> We are at our second location, Fishman Noodles. What is so special about this place is it's not the typical ramen. It's a combination of local flavors and Japanese. Uh, but we can see Hakka and even Hainanese influences in the food. Mm. Uh, let's get to eating, which is yeah. what we do best. How do we end up ordering so many? I thought we were going to try it's one you, or two. It's you, bro. After going through the menu, we realized that all the dishes were so diversified that we got to try everything. And if you think about your typical ramen, all these look like quite different, right? So this is the ramen with the wakame blended, blended into the pork broth. Yeah. The pork broth here, they all have like a similar broth base, but they add like slightly different stuff to it. Like for the wakame one, of course they blend the seaweed into it. And for the volcano one, add, you know, like chili paste. I say that. Okay, Jun. Hey, you all eat first, please. Yeah, man. Listening to him slurp it, right? It's, it's got that very satisfying ASMR. I'm in the danger zone, because I might finish everything. <laughs> Whack this one for that. Can you tahan already? And I love coriander, man. You guys love your century egg? Yeah. yeah? I, I'll, I'm okay. I'll have a bit. Ah, he's American. 
Look, if your egg is black in color, you know, it, look, way past the expiry date. <laughs> you're the guy who doesn't make it in the X Factor, okay? You're Absolutely. that guy. Yeah, that, I'll, uh, that's, why, uh, that's why you're my teammate in uh, X Factor. <laughs> yeah. If I join X Factor, I do it. Like, Joe Rogan doesn't even need to tell me. I'll be like, I won. <laughs> So the thing about coriander for me, I don't like it on its own, but if it's infused in, let's say, the soup, I'm actually okay with it. Wait, so you don't like it on its own because of like, it's like soap? I just don't like the green, green. I generally don't like green taste. He's an American and a ah, man child. Century egg. It's one of the best thing in the world, man. Not many chefs would put this on the menu and feature it on the I menu. Much less the whole egg, right? Yeah, much less the whole egg. This is one step away from being one of the most important dish I've eaten this year. Why is it missing that step? In the elements, if it's mixed together, then it's, it's there already. Renny, pass me the chopstick. I'm going in. This is the vinegar pork lah. No, I think normally uh, it's the pork hand, right? Ah. But they cook it into a, oh, like a pork belly. You heat it with the acid from the vinegar. vinegar. Right? And the sweetness. One step away oh. from being one of the most important dish. <laughs> I, this I think really nice one. I think it's my favorite so far. Yeah. Right? Maybe I'm a sucker for like, Acid, not not the drug, but like acidity in food. Yeah, I think in general, like fusion gets a bad rap because it feels like neither here nor there. It doesn't. It's not better than you know the the original cuisines that they draw inspiration from. But I feel like I I'm always very excited for for fusion food. Just to clarify, I have no problem with fusion food. I have a problem with people using it as the gimmick. selling point or gimmick. All this fusion stuff, right? The the good ones happen by mistake, and then the even more rare is when you get someone who has a deep understanding of food and this kind of thing happened. It's not the big daddy. The nangka came about because it was too spicy. So it's like, oh, we need something to, to cut the heat. And he just went with like a local ingredient, which is nangka. <laughs> His brain is trying how, to how, process how? it. How, how? Look at his face. <laughs> Reaction. This is how many steps away? <laughs> okay. It is spicy. Good oh, yeah. lord. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, you don't play play. For people who like spicy, <laughs> Is this the one for you? The nanka actually works very well with the dish. I don't think it cools down anything, <laughs> but it does give it a, a very playful twist, twist to it. Yeah. June? <coughs> give me a second. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> At first, I was like, what are you guys talking about? Then it's like, hello, oh, friends. I think I need a lot more nanka to cool yeah, yeah, my I need like, So while we cool down, we're going to bring Jimmy, one of the co founders of, of this mm. place, to tell us a bit more about. His dishes His and, concept. and why is it so spicy? <laughs> I'm crying, guys. Someone bring a pampers. <laughs> He's gonna shut it out already. This is Jimmy, Hi. Uh, one of the co-founders of Papa San and also Fusion, uh, man, uh, Fusion noodles. man Noodles. Yeah. In the dishes, uh, not everything is Hakka inspired, but definitely very got a lot of local element. Why why did you guys not do just a ramen plate? Because uh Sometimes she miss her mother's uh, cooking. She like to bring the chigok cho for us to eat. The pork is the the sole ma. Yeah. The main item is the ramen. Yeah. So we think to put the chigok cho flavor inside. So the, it was testing like you didn't know if if it will work or not lah. Yeah. And then you eat, yeah. you go like oh my god. Oh you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Do you wish to see more of your competition, meaning the other ramen shops? Yeah. Do fusion ramen like this? Yes, yes, yes. It's a good, good competition. Yeah, then the market will become very really hot and popular. So far, anyone tried to copy your ideas? Not yet. Oh. Not yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not famous so, enough. No. <laughs> I mean, like I said, uh, I promise this is not a food review or <laughs> recommendation. But come here and experience this, I would yeah. say. Come with an open mind, experience it. And you know, maybe this is a, this is a, a snapshot of the future. Yeah. We are at Cable and April. We saved the best one for the last. I feel this restaurant uh, and their team have managed to fold in uh, local cuisine in a very tasteful and refined way. In a way that it elevates both cuisine. It's yeah. subtle fusion, right? Yeah, and it's also refinement. Yeah. They've existed for so long and we think they've grown in like a very meaningful way. But I think for now, let's bring on the food. Food! Alright guys, oh. Oh, la la. so they've chosen a few dish uh, for us to try and uh, I insisted on this one because I think this is the most important dish I have had in the past maybe uh, This one is the uh, steps away uh, from no steps there, there already. <laughs> Hands down. Uh, uh, step away. Yeah. This is not, not, not this no, no step already. away, it's no there. Step okay, there. Zero okay. step away. Just the batter alone, it took them years the, to... The batter is magical. Yeah. Look at the amount of... The crackiness. Yeah. 
Hong, Hong just said just now that if yeah. they deep fry the shoe in this batter, he also eat Yeah, it. I'll eat it. Yeah. This one is the risotto with shaved mushroom, but the mm. twist here is they use the tan lan chai. Olive leaves. Olive yeah. leaves in, in olive oil. Oh, yeah. And this one is the nasi ulam with crab meat. And All this right. hard okra, it gives that different uh, take on okra, which we are not used to. I mean, okra normally either cook in curry or... Like steam. Yeah, yeah like a steam. So, right. mm. so guys, it's... dig in. All right, let's go. Yeah. Oh yeah, also this is the... I think it's oh, yeah, so my the favorite drink of all time. Uh, maybe it's it. Maybe yeah. one step lah. One step, yeah, one step away. But uh, it's an Earl Grey milk tea. Oh, it's so good. All right, I'm going to dig in. Mm. Well, the fusion that I see right now is not just on the plate, but on the table. Where else would you find a restaurant where they serve risotto with nasi ulam yes. right next to it? Mm. And they go well together in the sense where, you know, on the table, you wouldn't find them out of place. Yeah, the same so time, that good. makes it so, in a way, it's quite like Malaysian. Yeah. Can I squeeze the lime yeah, yeah, for yeah. everyone? Go ahead. The way I view table and apron, right? I might, I might be kissing Marcus's ass. <laughs> is, this is not just a restaurant. This is a curation. Yes, this is what? just what? how lump. you feel. Like, can it be elevated? Oh my god. Marcus, marry me. <laughs> I'm so serious now, man. It's unbelievable. <laughs> but, I mean, right? This should be in the Louvre. <laughs> Oh my like, god. I remember the first time I came here, I, I, I'm like, ah, I'm not coming back. And then Renyi said, like, oh, they have the best fried chicken. I came back and I'm like, not the fri best fried chicken. And then Marcus is like, I worked on the batter. Come try again. And then I came and he's like, okay. He's always improving, improving. Yeah. Come here, chill, I have a meal. But then at the same time, he nourishes my body and my soul. <laughs> oh my god, they should pay me. You, you really want to kiss Marcus' ass? Yeah, let's bring Marcus. Bring Marcus. Let's 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 bring Marcus. So, we are living home stream right now, being oh, yeah. right next to Marcus. Bloody hell, I'm so jealous. Oh, yeah. Anything to say? This is the restaurant that I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys, you know, come to saying, hey, it's not so much a fusion of uh, flavours on the same plate, but a fusion of flavours on the same table? So, actually, the word fusion, um, I mean, if you're a cook, and I think Yi Jun will identify with this. Hey, your your, your food very fusion. Uh. Here, see, this is this is a middle finger to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you just call my food That's what we were fusion. Saying, yeah. uh, right. Because the 1980s was, was when, you know, you had a chef decide, I'm going to slap a black cod with like miso, yes. correct? Right. And then everyone started doing all this other stuff. So they started calling it fusion, but realizing that it had no real roots. The term, the slang of fusion became an insult if you were in the industry, yep. right? But if you really think about it, Malaysian food is fusion, right? Yep. You know, we are really combining all of these things together, but how do we do it in a way that was very genuine? So one of the key things we've, we, we, we make sure that is that whether the flavor is familiar. And then we combine it in a way that has to have its own story or narrative to tell. And you can do it in a way where you don't have to be a fine dining restaurant to have thoughtful cooking, yeah. right? Uh, I think that's that's where it really comes down to us as chefs, how do we present those ideas. I think what today taught me is that, you know, Malaysia has a very diversified F&B scene. You have the gatekeepers of the tradition, like your key. You have the people who are pushing the boundaries, like uh, Fusion Man. And you have um, Table and Apron where they are doing their own thing in their own subtle way, but they are changing the landscape, whether you know it or not. Absolutely. The you know, whole reason why we can pick out every day here. <laughs> Do you have a closing statement, uh, Hong? Improve the parking. But that's not <laughs> the job. <laughs> this, is the, this is the customers that we hate. Right? You serve the best food, the best service. One star, no parking. No parking. <laughs> I think it's a very different episode from what we've done for the past I guess season. Yeah, this is an extra bonus episode coming out to, yeah. to eat with us. Oh, yeah, if you like this, I guess, let us know. Mm. Right? And Maybe we'll do, do more of it. I don't know, season. I don't know. I feel so scared to do more of this. <laughs> what is it they say? Like and subscribe. Yeah, well, yeah, there's that. Smash, or smash that button. <laughs> smash that like button. Smash that like button. But where's the button? Here? Or here? Can't be anywhere. Oh, people don't know. <laughs> Until then, we'll see you on the next season. Bye. Bye. <laughs>